Hey guys, Jack here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be doing another layout update for Stenburn Road. Um, as you can see, um, quite a bit has been done since the last one, and I haven't done one for a while, though, so I thought I'd better get some it done. Now, not all the work I've done has be actually been on the board, more of it's been on uh, separate projects on rolling stock and locos themselves. So uh, I've got a list written up, and we'll uh, just get straight back into it. The first thing I've done is um, uh, change the position of the board. As you can see, it is now here at the back of the room as you walk in. Um, if you remember it was over by the windows but uh, we had to move it to get the um, uh, new windows put in and uh, I decided to uh, just leave it here because I think it does look a bit better actually, here actually and I've got um, uh, easier access to everywhere as you can see I can get to this area better and that area and the uh, good thing about having it here is when I do running videos I can actually film this half of the layout now I couldn't do it before because of the lighting in that far corner but now that I've got it in the middle of the room, it means I can uh, film the entire thing and get some good shots coming through the station as well. Like uh, where these uh, this Pullman set is currently parked up. So yeah, it is looking a lot better now there. Um, coming around this side, you can see that um, uh, I haven't got the... Um, sorry, I just tripped over a box there. But I haven't got the um, uh, signal box lighting hooked up yet because of the new position. It is going to be quite awkward to get underneath the board and get the... Um, wire soldered back up but don't worry it's going to be done soon as you can see there's the um there's the switch i had to get that out and, i have to get that out and get that retinned after the uh wire came off but that is going to have to be fixed soon and that will hopefully be done for the next light update the second one is the second um, big thing really that's gone on is i've finished the ballast on this left side as you can see um if you remember in the last update it did only come to round about there about there, but uh, as you can see now, I've uh, filled it in, well all of it, and it now goes from there, round to uh, there, where the pull back of that Pullman carriage is, because if you remember, all of this was grass up until about there, but I've filled that in now, and uh, I c you can also see that I've removed the uh, semaphore signal that was there, now this being, well, attempting to be a modern image layout, I am wanting to change that um, uh, semaphore signal to a colour aspect one, like a two, a two aspect colour signal, so I'm going to hopefully be doing that soon enough, maybe at the end of the month or something. It just depends when I get time because signal isn't, signaling isn't high up on the priorities of things I want to do on the layout. But I have got um, uh, plans for that semaphore signal, but uh, I'll have to go through that in a separate video. Now, um, the other main project I've been doing, on the uh, board anyway, has been around the um, station. As you can see, I've got I've put some more fencing in. I've got some more of the Pico stuff. And as you can see, it now runs round the, the village green area all the way along just ignore those two cars there and I've got the next bit which is going to go in this um, side bit here so I'll come round there and show you now um, as you can see I've got um, uh, two lengths here just there and they're going to go from there oh, if I spin it around it might be easier from there round the along the edge to there and I've got this um, single length just in this bit here now it, that, it does actually leave a small gap here, which was going to be a problem at first, but I've decided once I get this bit stuck down, it's going to be a, a small gravel path leading out of the station car park, just to a little um, uh, worker's hut or something, and uh, that should look like a really good scene, but obviously I want to get uh, this area grassed up and this fence put down before I do any um, uh, little scenes like that. And I've also got another single length here, which is just going to go along there and cordon off this uh, paving from the uh, platform and the running lines nicely. So yeah, I have got through quite a lot of this fencing, but the good thing about it is it's cheap and you get quite a lot of it. The only really bit, the only bit more of it I need to get now is to uh, go along, go along here. But like I say, I'm going to have to uh, scenic this big area here before I do anything like that. I might put some around this bit as well, just to uh, separate off the um, non-scenic area where the controller is. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll just have to see. Also, look. Anyway, coming back to the station, as you can see, the paving has been put down. It's not perfect, I'll be honest. I could have done a bit of a better job, but it was quite late at night when I'd done it. And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it looks okay from from a uh, general viewing distance, but when you're getting close to here, as you, can, as you can see, there are a few imperfections. This bit mostly. As you can see there, there's got two gaps there, and that paving slab isn't down properly. But, so, but I'll just have to find something to cover that over with. I've done it on the other side as well. But as you can see, I've got a uh, telephone box there to uh, cover it up, so that's all right. Um, I've also painted the white lines on the uh, car park. Now, as you can tell, they are not right. Well, not right. They're right, 
but they're not perfect, not straight lines. So I probably will have to go over these ones to, um, and well, just go over them with the grey paint and do the uh, white lines on them again. As you can see, they went, they've, they went all right on the rest of the layout, but uh, I don't know what it was, maybe because there was quite a lot of them and they're all, you have to be very careful when you were painting them on. But yeah, um, for now anyway, I'm just uh, using these two cars here and putting them in these areas here where the um, white lines have messed up a bit just to uh, disguise the um, uh, mess up slightly. But yeah, I mean, it looks all right, but once you get, like a, like with the paving really, when you get in close, it doesn't look on the best. So the station front is done for now, but it is going to need a bit more um, uh, tweaking in the future just to make it look presentable. Now, I think that's most of the stuff that I've been doing on the um, layout itself. Actually, no, it's not. I've uh, put some more fencing in. As you can see, I put it around um, this bit here. The uh, field, I've put the fencing around in front of the bushes now. And this scene is pretty much finished. I mean, maybe a few more trees and a few different shades of these bushes, but uh, could be added in the future. But uh, most, most of, um, uh, mo mostly, this scene is finished. It's it's achieved exactly what I wanted to uh, go for. Just move that box out of the way. And yeah, as you can see, when I come down to a like a looking angle, like track level, and you look along there, it's where the class sixty six is. You know the teddy bear. <laughs> it does look quite good. As you can see, and then you look at the, then you can look into the yard as well. Whereas, as you can see, I've got three steam locos parked up at the moment. Well, and and a class twenty, which is, but that's always there. So as you can see, with the J ninety four, the tornado, and a Pullman Lima ninety four XX out as well, and that is actually running quite smoothly for its age. Um, I think I, need, I do need to clean the clean the uh, body shell up a bit, but running wise, it is going quite well. So um, I'll maybe do a running video for you of that in a bit. Maybe run it with um, a whole class or something. Just in case, but I'll, that'll probably only happen if I haven't got anything else to uh, any other videos lined up. I mean, so yeah. Now um, I've also put some of this Spackman security fencing in. Got this a couple of weeks ago, as you can see. I uh, this is a full pack. is about it's five quid, and it's got me about thirty centimeters. So, is it worth it? Probably not, but I do need it, and it's the cheapest security fencing there is. So yeah. I mean, I, I think it needs a bit um, uh, painted and weathered up a bit as well because as you can see, it is quite bright. But um, when I come down to a uh, road level, it does look quite good. As you can see, I put bushes on both sides. Obviously, this side here, I do want to get some, uh, definitely get some more different shades of bushes in here and build this up as more of an overgrown area. But yeah, I do still need more of it to uh, go down here, behind the um, uh, wrecker truck, and uh, along this bit around the back of the garage as well. So yeah, I mean, there is also a really good security fencing range by ratio, which is a, a kit, and that's ten pounds. But it did, I think you get a bit more, and it is more detailed. So I am planning on using the ratio security fence to go around the TMD yard area, like um, on this curve here. But it just depends how much it's going to cost and how much you get in a single pack. But so so I'll just have to uh, think about that and uh, have a look at some reviews of it and see what's going on. So um, if any of you have used the uh, ratio security fencing, could you please leave in the comments what your thoughts are and how much of it you get out of one pack would be uh, helpful. That So um, uh, yeah, if you'd please be able to do that. Also, I have started on a level crossing project. Here it is. Now, um, if you're on the um, Up and All Hours Model Railway Group, you'll have seen my photo of this that I've up uploaded. But basically, it's um, just plastic guard. And... It's uh, not finished yet, well obviously as you can see, um, I've got the basic outline of it made but it still needs painted and I've got some uh, level crossing kits lined up to uh, do some modern barriers to go on each end and then obviously it needs the road markings painted on. But I am going to have to get some, uh, get the grey paint mixed up and uh, so it'll um, blend in nicely with the road when it comes out. I, was gonna do, I would have done a polyfiller one. But um, I'm not confident. I'm not at a confident modelling level enough to uh, do that because I'd probably end up making the track unusable, and that would mean having to take up all of this track and undoing all of the work that I've already done in it. I didn't really want to do that. So yeah, for now anyway, it is looking quite good. Um, it, this bit here does um, ride up a bit where the ballast is, but uh, once it eventually gets stuck down, which I'll do when it's painted, it will um, obviously go fine. As you can see, the um, 47. Just, it, everything does run nice and smoothly over it. Obviously, the, obviously this 47 is not powered, but uh, as you can see, it does run nice and smooth, as does every other loco. I did do a thorough test of it to make sure that every loco I have will run over this. 
and they all do, which is all good. So yeah, um, every other thing that I've done has been on um, local projects themselves um, and rolling stock. So um, I'm going to go over them in the uh, second part of the layout update. So stay tuned um, and I'll be back with part two in a bit. Take care and I'll see you then.